everyone, my name is Ian and you are watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. So here's what I've got for you here today. Yes, it's another KTM. KTM fans will love this video. Other people, maybe not so much. Now, this is a 2023 KTM 890 Adventure but it's the R version. So this is the more off-road oriented version of the 890 Adventure. So here's what we're gonna do today. We're not gonna do my full in-depth review because I've already covered these 790s and 890s and 901s in great detail and there's no reason to go through everything again. But what I am gonna do is take you on a quick tour around the bike, talk about some of the features, how it's different from the base model that I recently purchased. Um, then we'll go for a quick ride to kind of highlight how this thing performs off-road and on the street. Now, I know I can already hear you keyboard wires out there typing away in the comments already. Number one, why do you keep buying more KTM? So yes, I did actually just buy this bike and we'll talk a bit about that uh, throughout this little film today. Why do you keep buying KTMs? Don't they have reliability issues? And were you not happy with the base model, so you had to get the R, should you have just got the R to begin with? So I'm gonna address all that throughout today's video. Number one, why do I keep buying KTM 890s? The reason is that it simply comes down to performance, and mostly off-road performance. The suspension package on this bike allows me to ride at such a high pace off-road and hit things at high speed, whether it's here in the mountains or out in a desert or just riding fast, it gives me the safety margin to hit uh, obstacles on the trail, dips, ruts, rocks, at speeds beyond what any other factory adventure bike can handle. That's a safety factor for me and it just fits the way that I ride. The low center of gravity, the low fuel tank, it has the best electronics package in the adventure bike marketplace. It's got the best power to weight ratio in the adventure bike marketplace. I also really like the updated styling for 2023. Uh, I talked about this with my other 890, but I like the R. I like the white, I like the orange, I like the blue tank. It just works for me. It doesn't work for everybody, and that's okay. Also, I like the orange frame. Second thing, don't KTMs have reliability issues? Um, I would say yes. For their adventure bikes, they do seem to struggle more with quality control, durability, reliability, as compared to some of the other brands, especially maybe the Japanese brand. So why do I keep buying them despite that? It comes back to the performance. Look, there's just nothing else that I can buy that performs the way I want it to. Uh, the cl next closest things in terms of off-road performance for a multi-cylinder adventure bike, Ducati Desert X and Touareg 660. I've owned the Touareg 660, fantastic bike. I almost bought another one of those, but I, I, there's a few things about the 890 I prefer. The extra power, uh, the better electronics, firmer suspension, a little more fuel capacity, lower center of gravity, a few other things, but those are the main points. Ducati Desert X. Why didn't I get a Desert X? I was close to getting a Desert X. It's more expensive than this bike. It doesn't have the low center of gravity. It's got a very vulnerable, fragile kind of metal fuel tank. You have to put crash bars on it. Um, it doesn't quite have the uh, suspension performance of this out of the box, although it's quite good that Ducati is. It's just not to this level. The other thing is, I've got a ton of cool parts for the 890s. I've got steering dampers, I've got luggage racks, I've got flex bars, I've got uh, GPS mounts, I've got, you know, uh, aux lights from Cyclops that I'm gonna be moving over from my other 890s. So I've already got all the stuff, the cool stuff. I mean, foot pigs, all, everything you can think of, I have for the 890 already, so I don't have to buy it again. So that was a huge factor. Also, I got a great deal on it, and I bought an extended warranty so I can thrash it for a couple years. I'm sorry, not thrash it, but use it in the way it was intended and maintain it very carefully, but have that extended warranty because I honestly do have reservations about the reliability of these, of these engines and these bikes overall. Right, so why am I buying this when I already have another 890, that base model? So I'm finishing the video series with that base model now, and I do love that bike, and I do maintain that it's still better for most average riders than this R model is. We'll talk about some of the reasons why. The th reason that the base model wasn't working for me ultimately was I changed the suspension out, spent almost $2,000 changing the suspension on that, on that bike, and I still can't get it to perform 
the way I wanted to. I think it's to do with spring rates, it's to do with the length of the stroke of the suspension. This has 40 millimeters more suspension stroke front and back, so you know it's just you're starting out with so much more travel. Um, I couldn't get the other bike to perform the way I wanted off-road without bottoming out, so uh, I got such a great deal on this, it just made sense to go ahead and get the R model. Now the base model is a better road bike, we'll talk about some of the reasons why, and I'm finishing the video series with that bike, uh, but enough blabber, let's give you a quick tour around. Uh, so we've, you know, we've covered these 890s so much, it's the 890cc, uh, you know, uh, 105 horsepower, around, what is it, 70 foot-pounds of torque, somewhere in there, I'll put that below if that's not right. You have WP Explore. Uh, Open cartridge front forks, 240 millimeter, 9.4 inches of travel. You've got a WP rear shock, 9.4 inches, 240 millimeters of travel. You've got 5.3 gallons or about 20 liters of fuel that's carried down low. Um, the R model, you get a high fender, you get a shorter windshield, different plastics, different seats. It's got a one-piece seat. It's higher up. The whole bike is higher up. You get more ground clearance. Um, what else do you want to know? Great brakes, great suspension. It comes with these Mitas EO7 Plus tires, which are a pretty good factory tire for an adventure bike, I have to say. That's a pretty, pretty good choice for a true 50-50 tire. Pretty impressed with that. Um, let's see, what else? You know, obviously chain drive. Uh, the electronics are amazing, the 9-level traction control, the rally mode, cruise control, uh, cornering sensitive ABS, cornering sensitive traction control, 6-axis IMU, all that kind of stuff. Now, I did get the tech pack on here, so uh, I bought it at delivery, meaning there's no demo mode on this bike. Uh, I just purchased that up front, so my uh, cruise control, MSR, rally mode, quick shifter, is all unlocked. I never have to go back and unlock the demo mode. The seat height is pretty tall on this. It's around 34 and a half inches. I'll put the millimeters here in the text because I don't remember that conversion. You do have to deal with that taller seat height, and that is why I think that other model is better for most people. Also, the suspension on this is very hard, very stiff, and it's going to feel pretty jarring for a lot of people, but the faster you ride it, the better that it gets. Uh, what else can we talk about? The bike comes with a steering damper from the factory, although it's not very good, and I'm putting on a Scott's steering damper. I'm going to be changing a lot of stuff on this bike. Comes with the rack, got the grab handles, storage under the side panels, uh, and then in terms of the dashboard, you know, you've seen this if you've watched my other videos, but they updated the, the dashboard. I'm in rally mode here. Uh, really nice, bright, crisp, just big enough, great information, easy to navigate, so I do appreciate that. All right, jumping on the bike here, uh, I do notice, because I'm used to my other 890, the base model, how much higher this is. Um, yeah, I do definitely notice that. It's not a huge problem for me. I just slide my butt off, and I'm used to doing that. I'm 5'10", or 1.78 meters. I don't have a huge issue with this height, although I do I do prefer the lower height, but there's just it's a trade-off. If you want that long suspension stroke for off-road, you just can't have a low seat height. The two things don't go together, because how would they... How would they you know, that wouldn't work. It's again, it's, it just doesn't work that way. You can't package a motorcycle like that. So, uh, first impressions jumping on. Yeah, the windshield is lower than the other bike that I have. The, the base model or S model has a taller windshield with a hole in it. This has a lower model. Really bad wind buffeting on this. I'll show that <laughs> in the highway portion. So, we'll go ahead and jump on and just uh, give you some first impressions here. So I've got the bike in rally mode set to number seven. I just use rally mode when I'm off-road. It turns the ABS off. So on the new 23 bikes, it's linked. The ride mode is linked to the ABS. So it turns your rear ABS off for you. No separate step. And then up and down buttons, traction control. Nine is the most traction control. One is, I think, essentially off. So on uh, with these tires on loose roads like this, I tend to prefer about a seven. Alright, so what do we notice when we're jumping on the R? Um, it feels like a big dirt bike. The suspension is really firm, really stiff, but it allows you to ride very quickly. Um, you also kind of have the feeling of sitting up on top of the bike rather than down in it. 
a lot of the how the bike's going to feel off-road is how you have it set up what kind of tires you have how you have the suspension set where you have your handlebars and the body position that you use to ride so this bike really favors a more aggressive riding style it's set up to ride aggressively off-road which is kind of the opposite of most adventure bikes right most adventure bikes are undersprung and they have the bars too far back this bike the bar position which is adjustable but it wants you to be up over the front end like you should be on a dirt bike it wants you to be hitting obstacles fast and it just likes being ridden it just likes being ridden fast <laughs> i mean you really <laughs> <laughs> and the, the huge the, the, what it really boils down to is a suspension okay uh you can have a great motor you can have whatever else but if you don't have a suspension package that allows you to ride without the fear of crashing due to bottoming out and hitting you know when you hit something fast um then it's not the bike for you and that was the case with my other 890 unfortunately this has <laughs> this <laughs> uh, it's too much fun this has the most aggressive suspension package of any adventure bike period like not even competition the, the desert x is pretty good and the touareg is pretty good they're softer this is firmer which um i like when i start going faster uh it's not as comfortable as those other bikes I need to make some tweaks to this. This is my first ride. It has 19 miles on it. So I need to tighten the steering, which I feel is loose already. I need to adjust my suspension. I need to make a few tweaks to the ergonomics. But it's already pretty good the way it is. The rear shock is a little bit, it does feel kind of harsh in the back. Same thing when I had my 790R. It was always like that. The, the forks, so for 2023, they changed the valving a little bit in the front uh, Explore fork, and it, it gives you better trail feel. Uh, Mad TV tested this as well, if you saw their video. It does have better trail feel. It means it's a little less harsh and has a little better compliance from that front, from that front fork. So I appreciate that. Even under hard braking, like there's not much suspension dive happening here. Okay, let's rip through the sand wash here. It's very deep, very dry right now. I'm going to turn my traction control all the way off for this part. Ooh, she looks deep, huh? <laughs> oh god this thing has so much confidence but it really it really rewards that that more aggressive faster riding style whoa holy moly whoa that is deep man if I stop back there, I would be stuck, man. You cannot stop in that thing. So, we're sand, you gotta be aggressive, you gotta be, you know, all those sorts of things. Goodbye position. These tires are not great for sand, but you can survive it. Uh, just don't stop, you know? <laughs> the thing I just realized we didn't cover is why did I sell the rally? Uh, a lot of you have commented on that. Um, really at the time it was uh, because i just bought the tuareg and i didn't have time to ride both but also the rally was very tall um it's another 30 millimeters taller than than this bike and i just found the seat height to be kind of intimidating uh at the end of the day on, on the rally model otherwise that bike was phenomenal the suspension performance of the rally is is even in another universe even compared even compared to this bike <laughs> It's just so plush on that rally, but still so supportive. This bike is very supportive and very firm, very controlled, but it, it, it rides a lot rougher than the rally did. All right, so I test all the adventure bikes on this road here. It's not a difficult road or anything like that. It's not even close to the capabilities 
of what this bike can do. However, the reason that I test all the adventure bikes on this particular trail is it's got these big washouts in it. And the washouts, and it's also got a lot of rocks too, it's a really great suspension road or suspension testing road. The the only adventure bikes that I've tested on this, riding them at a pretty good speed, that have not bottomed out and crashed all the way through the stroke. Uh, one was the 890 Rally that I had. The other was the Touareg. And uh, the Desert X, maybe. I think the Desert X bottomed on the back, though. So we'll see. We'll see how the 890 does. Now, I'm a little bit paranoid about rocks because I... I haven't, uh, I have an AXP skid plate for this sitting at home, but I haven't installed it yet. So I wanted to do this test ride first, showing you the bike stock. But I put a hole in the engine of my other 890 by hitting a rock like this. So I'm really paranoid about that. But the thing is, like, I can ride this bike fast enough where, where I just can't talk because I have to focus. I need to get better tires. Um, but like that, this right here, boom. Like that, that would be a, a hard bottom out on anything else. This right here, boom, like totally controlled on this bike. And I could ride this a lot faster. This right here, nope, no bottom. My kickstand though is flopping around. Um, I don't know why that is. So really it's the suspension and it, it just, that's everything on these adventure bikes, you know? And it's so hard to find an adventure bike that for the aggressive off-road guys that really has the suspension you're looking for. This, this bike does have it though. So you put up with some of the reliability issues, the little glitches that they have um, for the better performance and more fun. And I, I do make that trade-off. I acknowledge that. But God, there's no, there's no other stock adventure bike that I could, I could ride like this. All right, let's test the 890R on the highway. We'll run down this kind of straight road for a while and then we'll get a little twisty. So it's gonna be, you know, really good because we've already tested the other variants of the bike. The differences with the R model, suspension is stiffer and you feel a lot of the bumps that just have the rides more jiggly and more rough. Uh, you don't have as good a wind protection as with the base model. So I'm getting a ton of wind buffeting off the screen. The wind's hitting me right on the peak of my uh, Kryos Pro helmet. So it's almost quieter if I try to sit up more to get out of the, get out of the buffeting, but that's an easy fix. Uh, the seat is not as comfortable as my other 890, as the base model 890. So yeah, it's just not, you know, they're designed to do different things. It's not that this is a better bike than that base. They, you know, it's almost like there's the street model and then there's the off-road model. Although the street model is really good off-road, it's just not as good as this. And then this is good on the road, just not as good as the other one. So it's a trade-off. Um, you have the same electronics package, same brake, same same punchy engine, you know, cruise control. But yeah, I'm gonna have to do something about this. This is not gonna work for me. I'm 5'10", 1.78 meter, and this is, the buffeting is just, I don't know if you can hear that. It's like my helmet is just being vibrated to death. And I'm only going 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour, so. If I go 70, then my helmet's really shaking. So I'll put a spoiler on it or something, I, I don't know. Almost, almost maybe would like a lower windshield, so I'm just in clean air, but I, I'm not sure yet. All right, let's get on the twisty road with the R. Now, I've said in the other video series that the base 890 is a better street bike, and it is. Uh, this doesn't handle as quickly. It's higher off the ground, has a higher center of gravity, so it's not as good of a road bike. Um, however, that being said, unless you're a pretty discerning rider, you're not gonna tell a huge difference. Of course, it's also gonna have to do with the tires that you have on it. Also, the ride on this is much firmer and much more jiggly than the, than the base model is. But it's still the 890 that we know and love. It's a just a fantastic performer. And really, you know, you have so much power and handling and technology with this thing. It just really makes you wonder why stuff like the 1290, you know, why do you really need a 1290? It's so overkill. This is already 
so good it, as it is. And this is so much lighter and a lot less expensive than something like a 1290. These Mitas EO7s are, you know, they feel pretty good on the road. They did feel a little bit too slippery for my taste off-road though. I think I'm gonna have to change them out. Yeah, the suspension on this is quite a, it just feels like a different bike, you know, and you, you definitely feel that you're higher in the air, which is not really what you want for road performance, but if you're buying the R model, you're really going for that off-road performance, not so much a sport bike. You know, there's other bikes for, for doing sport bike stuff. I know there's some glare from the sun because it's the end of the day here at sunset, so I apologize for that. But this thing, this thing rips and it's still a ton of fun. <laughs> it's still just a fantastic road bike. It's, it's amazing we live in a day and age where a bike can be so good off-road and so good on-road. It's incredible that you get all that with one motorcycle. Okay, so I was editing the video and I realized I forgot to film a outro or conclusion. So let's do that real quick here in the garage. Of course, it's like two or three weeks later due to the magic of YouTube and how these things work. But let me flip this around and just film a quick uh, outro for this uh, for this first ride video on the 890R. All right, well, you can see that it's uh, it kind of in pieces right now. And don't worry, nothing bad happened. It's just that I am doing my wiring and putting on my electronics, my GPS, my heated grips, my Cyclops lights, my anti-gravity battery. Uh, I've got flex bars. I've got the Scott's damper, uh, AXP skid plates on. I'm putting on foot pegs. I'm changing just about everything. You can see that. So that's pretty cool. And I am pretty happy with this decision. I do feel like if I have to pick an adventure bike for myself, for my own personal riding, for the next couple of years, hopefully, I think this is going to be the bike that keeps me happy. Oh, look, I also changed the tires. So I've got uh, Motaz Rowles front and back tires, and these are a lot better off-road. So I'll update this later, um, but I'm always a go-to with the Motaz tires. They just hold up really well and they perform very, very well. So you're getting kind of a sneak peek of some future content, but I have to take the headlight off and take all this fairing off to get to the accessory wires here to wire in the lights, the GPS, the heater grips, and all that kind of stuff. Now you're also getting kind of a sneak peek of what else is happening in the garage uh, today as I'm doing this. So I've got the Honda XR150 here for testing. I've got the BMW R1250 RT, which is a sensational, sensational touring bike. So stay tuned for all that stuff. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the first ride video, the brief review of the 2023 890 Adventure R. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Did I make a right choice by getting this or should I have gotten the Desert X or something else like that? Probably the Desert X would have been the obvious choice. And I do kind of want a Desert X, but I don't know. Let me know what you'd like to see for future content. Keep in mind, I can't buy every bike out there due to financial reasons. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in the description and the pinned comment below. Other than that, ride safe, and I'll see you out there.